Welcome one and all to K5 and today we're um, yes we're going to look at some of this some of this and uh, we're going to find out what the majorettes I'm going to show you have got to do with this This is the Majorette Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcat. And yes, there's three cars in front of you and they all look identical, but are they? Well, there are some subtle differences between the three of them. First one you can see, this is a racing car from the Racing Cars series. This was sent to me by Friesian's Diecast and this was the first one of these I actually managed to get. Next up, it says there the 7 of 21. This was the original series one or two, whatever it is. Uh, first series of premium cars available. And this was the missing link for a long, long time. And I got that one there from Toys R Us, which was amazing. And then just recently, uh, Home Bargains, I picked this one up and this is uh, a special one. I'm uh, not sure what that means on there. I'm sure it's something to do with America or Europe or something. Uh, all the cards are basically the same, except for that, obviously, that racing car one, which is a bit orangier. Right, let's open this one up and have a look. So, uh, that's how you do it with a majorette, just from the bottom. <laughs> right, and it's also got this little card in here as well, which is going to tell us the other cars in the series, hopefully. So, we'll have a little look at them. Oh, look, I've got that one. Oh, I never got that Ford Mustang. I think I've got the Gallardo. Definitely got that Fiesta. Oh, that's nice. I don't think I managed to pick up that one. That's the Camaro. There's the Hellcat that we've got. There's quite a few cars in this series. Oh, look, I recognise that Mercedes and the Gallardo. I don't think I've got that though. That's really nice, isn't it? Uh, I've got that one. Got one of those or several of those ones. And I think that's interesting. It's the same car, but uh, a green one or a blue one. Did I get the green one? Hmm, probably. Wow, there we go. So that's that series, the racing car series. And it's got, actually got pictures of the actual cars as well. Oh, look at that. Now that never showed up. That never showed up. Wow, all that beetle. There's quite a few of these cars I don't have. Look at that McGann, wow. Wow, 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 wow. So if you were lucky enough to uh, find this series, if you were living in uh, mainland Europe, you would have probably found all those. Brilliant. I love that piece. It's one of my favourites, that Alpine. So let's have a look around this car. Well, it's got lots of extra tampos. I'm guessing that's the number 11 on the side. Uh, is that a reason for it not being number 11? Nope. Nope, it's number three of 18. Nice little uh, headlamps there. All these cars are going to be made the same and I'll just uh, go through them as I open them. So it's got opening doors. Wow, look at that interior. Well, that is excellent. Wow, lovely uh, matte black finish there and really, really cool tampos. Wow. Well, I've got this car out. I might as well compare it to its nearest rival, which is the Matchbox in my opinion. So here's a nice pinky one. And the Matchbox have everything tampoed on. Different kind of front end to it. Of course, this is the Hellcat versus the, um, the regular Charger. Challenger, I should say. Although that is an SRT as well. This must be a new SRT. It's the old SRT versus the new one. And another uh, feature of this one is it's bigger and the major it comes in at 166 as compared to, believe it or not, back in the day, did this one have a scale on it? I think it's like really, oh, there you are, 167. So that is really tiny, 166, 167. I don't think it's put on that much weight over the centuries. Right, so there's that one. Fantastic. Lean, mean, and green. Next up, Let's check out this one. This is the 7 of 21. Of course, this series is now long since gone. 
and I think I've got all the cars in it now. So this was the last of the cars that I hadn't cracked from that series. Of course, this one opening doors, all the same features, more or less, except it hasn't got the um, the decals on the front bonnet there. But the construction is exactly the same. Even the paint is the same colour, which is amazing. It's got a little Hellcat on the side of that uh, front wing there. Marker lights, same rear ends. Lovely, lovely piece. Wow. You can see that uh, keeping your car in its blister is not necessarily the best thing for it. This one's been in the blister the longest and done a bit of traveling as well because it came from Germany. Whereas this one's just been sitting at home. Um, well, since I bought, I bought it probably in the uh, at the end of summer, last summer. Quick look at this catalog, the 7 of 21 catalog. We have, I've definitely got the Alpha, got the Audi, got the Audis, got the Bentley at last. That's last week or whenever it was I opened that one up got the cactus oh got that Camaro that's nice the orange it's not orange I'm sure it was a yellow one I do have a red one somewhere this is amazing F140 got the Dodge we got the Challenger at last got the Jaguar got the Huracan oh this is a new series oh right AMG because that Huracan wasn't in the last series oh the AMG hmm oh, I want to see what I've done here I seem to have got myself into a new series. Oh, I remember getting that Subaru. That's nice. A lot of these cars are uh, carryovers from the last series. So, and there's that Nissan in white. I'm loving this piece. I'm loving those wheels. Let's get it out. Oh. There we go. Now, this is uh, the latest uh, car release. Probably released around about 2018. Again, identical green. It's going to be identical to this 21 in all the paint details around the car. All it's got different are those wheels. And if you remember earlier, I showed you this old Siku. Now, in my opinion, I reckon, uh, and also so then the nice and new wheels as well. I like those wheels. In my opinion, that's a throwback there to the Siku, almost a homage. And I really like that. That's a nice way of um, showing the brand. I did like it when CQ did that. And that was something from oh, the 80s, late 80s. They started doing that as a marker point. Brilliant. And there you go. That is our little show for today. Wow. And all the co-stars in the back there. These are all old Matchbox number ones. Dodge Challengers. There's the original. Oh, look, I've got a Top Trump card. That's what that is. It's all about Top Trumps. And this is the uh, the full rundown of this car. Excellent. Look at all that in multiple languages as well, just in case uh, you get confused. Interesting uh, date on there, 2017. <laughs>
models that uh, Mattel have done uh, and it's here you see all its glory let's pull the camera back a bit big package you see but um, hopefully you can catch all of that go all the way back here still can't see it um, yeah as you can see there's that logo which has been reproduced uh -huh. maybe some slight variations um, one of the things that uh, manufacturers who uh, buy brands like to do is uh, if there's intellectual property uh, as as this logo is and the brand is every so often they like to make sure that they uh, keep ownership and the way you do that is by applying it onto a brand um, and so for me this is probably more an exercise in keeping the ownership of the brand alive a suitable excuse that's a cynical response but you know it, it's the one that I tend to think is what it's about because there's not a lot going on here okay to reinforce the super fast thing because yes there is an attempt with the packaging uh, you've got the old brand on there but there's nothing on the back to tell you about the history of it which I think is pretty but there again remember that Mattel owned Matchbox and Mattel created Hot Wheels and Hot Wheels um, came up with the low friction wheels which inspired Matchbox to have to come up with Superfast. It's not really too much of a surprise that uh, Mattel are going to make a big thing about the history of Superfast. They're, all they're going to do is look for a convenient opportunity to use um, you know, the logo. And that's, to me, what it's about. But anyway, enough of the political stuff. It's boring. Um, that's the model. Okay, uh, I got one out of the series because I felt that it was probably one of the better ones. Um, I bought it from a company called uh, Modelmatic, who are based in York. Um, it wasn't cheap. The model itself is running in at about £8.99, uh, and I had a postage to pound swap, so all of that lot came in at um, just over £12. A lot of money for a model, perhaps, but, you know, if you're only buying one and you want to get hold of it, then you know it's fair game and uh, the chap running Modelmatic um, is trying to make a living so he can't sell them at the price you get them in the States they're not going to be available in this country from what I understand and if they do turn up they may turn up in some of like home bargains um, you know sometime towards the end of the year but I'm, I wouldn't count on that if I were you uh, if they do turn up in pound uh, home bargains for a pound I will be most annoyed obviously um, anyway i as well as this one, I'm going to be getting the Mercedes 220 um, and also uh, the two opening door cars that have come out, which is the Pontiac and the VW. Uh, but I'll be getting those from a uh, contact I've got in Canada and it'll be costing me proportionally less than this operation. But uh, anyway, I waffle on gloriously. Let's get the model out of the box. As you can see, I pre-cut it. Rather than rip it like certain video makers do um, that allows you to see the packaging uh, I don't know quite why you go to the trouble of producing all the artwork and then obliterate it by putting a model over the top but you know hey ho I can't imagine Lesney ever doing it it just doesn't make sense but um, you've got to have a back card and you've got to put some graphics on it so I suppose that's how they work it it's, it's, a, it's an attempt at doing something like this with these speed lines as you can see this is another super fast thing you can see another interpretation of the super fast logo with the wheel on it there you go <clears throat> so we've seen the back of the package not a lot going on there let's have a look at the box there's the box not a great deal going on there but at least they've made an attempt you know colors slightly out but hey ho so um and the, the end of the box is quite nice as well it's a nice detail shot so it's quite attractive let's have a look at the model right let's have a look at this thing then so it is apparently a range rover 2018 range rover vogue se so it's quite a current range rover as you can see it's got the 65th anniversary thing on there which is uh, was last year so I don't quite know why um, 
the guys at Matchbox have done this, but presumably maybe they were going to do some more 65th anniversary models um, as a high-end set, and it didn't happen. Um, and they've used the occasion of Superfast. I don't know. I mean, it's not for me to really say, but it does make it a bit curious when you're in a packaging that says it's the 50th anniversary of Superfast, um, and it doesn't have 50 on the side, but... You know, who cares? It's not such a big deal. Um, anyway, these, I suppose the obvious thing to point out is the fact that these aren't super fast wheels. And that's another uh, pointer to the fact that this is a bit of a strange celebration of something when you haven't got a super fast wheel or an indication of one. I believe there is going to be another set of models later in the year. One of them is going to be the Blue Shark. Uh, which is um, obviously an early super fast model from around about 1971. That, I've been told from an inside source, reliably, is a retooling. It is not the old um, tooling. Okay, so uh, we shall wait and see what that looks like. Anyway, these aren't super fast wheels. They are rubber tired wheels. Um, and although the, the car moves along at a reasonable pace, it's not exactly um, track stuff. It doesn't matter. You know, it's just semantics, isn't it? Um, anyway, the level of detail on this model is particularly good. You know, you've got um, tempo printing on the front, on the sides, on the back. Um, this grey line here is tempo. It's very well done, actually. All the black areas around the window sills. Um, unfortunately, you've got the old blobby steering wheel syndrome, but never mind. Uh, this tailgate is obviously a, a big thing. This is one of a series of models that have got opening parts on. This is a plastic tailgate. And then they've printed onto the, the outside the body colour and the other details, which has been done very well. Um, initially, when you're trying to open this, it's quite difficult. But once you've done it a few times, it's easier. Uh, and it closes too quite nicely. Bit of a gap, but never mind. Um, but it's quite a good colour approximation. So overall, it's a nice little model of a Range Rover. Tad expensive, obviously, after I purchased it the way I did. But, you know, my attitude is that, you know, perhaps when you these um, celebration models come out, it's nice to get hold of them because then you've got them and you satisfy that sort of particular collecting urge. So um, these wheels are quite the first model I've had with these wheels on. They're not too bad. The silver lining on them is quite nice, the chroming detail. The tyres are a bit chunky, but um, it's an off-roader, so it's supposed to be a bit chunky. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not an awful lot I can criticise about this, apart from the fact that one thing that I find highly annoying, and I will say this, is that given the fact that the super fast wheels were uh, created by Matchbox, by Lesney, in 1969, which also happens to be the year I was born, so that shows you my age, um, they were created in Hackney, in East London, in England, in the United Kingdom, and therefore these models really should be made available to people in the United Kingdom, because there's plenty of people that will remember these, and they aren't necessarily normal uh, collectors of diecast, and if they'd actually made these available through department stores, I think they would have sold very well at a reasonable price, somewhere in the region of around about £4. But they didn't have the imagination to do it. It's either that or fact is that for a lot of us have been thinking for some time now that really um, there is the a division of Mattel, which is based in the United Kingdom, which doesn't seem to do anything. It doesn't seem to have any interest at all in Mattel. It certainly doesn't seem to have any interest in Matchbox. And I can speak from personal experience when I had to deal with them uh, when I was working on a magazine. Uh, really hard to try and actually get them to do things. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I could mither on for ages. Most of us are fairly up to speed on all of this. And if you're not in the UK and you're watching this from America, then knock yourselves out because you can buy loads of these. But over in the United Kingdom, these are going to be fairly rare items uh, and treasured too. And it's nice to have the value, but I just resent the fact that um, we have to go to such ends to try and get hold of things, which really, you know, any company that any any sense at all would realise that. And I'm afraid 
it only indicates, whoops, only indicates the fact that perhaps uh, Mattel need to actually learn to have a little bit more humanity about them and understand that people like me and you in the United Kingdom are buying these things and um, the money's going into their pockets one way or another. So isn't it about time they started to appreciate that fact? It's not a dig at uh, Abe Lugo and his colleagues on his team because they can only do as what they can. Uh, they've got a job to do and that's to make these wonderful things. It's not their job to sort out the distribution. Um, I'm sure he's well aware of it, but there's not an awful lot he can do. He's got a job to do, that's to make these, not to do the distribution. So I don't know how many times you have to say it. I don't think they really care because they've been told time and time again. But um, anyway, we'll get off my soapbox and put the model on a cardboard box and hope it doesn't fall off again. There you go. That's me out and uh, see you soon. Well, thanks Mark for that brilliant introduction to uh, the new 50th anniversary Superfast range. Yeah, I bought something for Modelmatic as well. But before I show you it, I'm gonna just quickly give you a rundown of some of the history behind the model. So here we have the original 1963 release of the Mercedes 220 SE. There she is. If you note the uh, little silver wheels on there, this was a very short run operation. They did increase the size of the silver wheels, but uh, if any collectors of Leslie Matchbox will know that the silver wheel run is a short thing. Um, and then they were replaced with black plastic wheels Another interesting feature on this car is the multicolourness of it. I know you can't see a lot of the colour there and it's going to be very hard to tell, but um, all these cars, for some reason, the doors always came out a different shade to the rest of the body. This is the first run version with the silver wheels and the burgundy paint job. Opening doors, very nice. And then they changed the colour to this red you see here. Someone. This is a good example of uh, why not to paint your models when you're little. <laughs> hey, why not? This one just needs badly needs restoring. But there we go, there's a black plastic wheel version. And uh, this car, at number 53, stuck around in the lineup till about 1969. So it had a good, good run, 63 to 69. Very nice piece. Well, it's actually, yeah, 69 was replaced by the Zodiac, I think. And this was 53B. Preceded, of course, by the wonderful Aston Martin DB4, or three, or two to two to four, something like that. I do um, have my eye on one of those, but uh, whether it's still in location, I don't know. Of course, another feature of these is the hand-painted silver bits on the back. Of course, you wouldn't be able to tell this one whether it's late or early because of that. Um, in 1970. They changed, or 69, yeah, 69. They changed up to uh, this model, the green version. This is a 300 SE. It's got the bigger engine, probably taken out of the SL it's from uh, the Goldwing days. Lovely little uh, tri-star on the bonnet there. Opening doors, great feature, and an opening boot. Wow. You can tell this is an early run. Um, because of little features, it's got little studs inside the wheel wells there, and little and big studs at the back there. Came out in green, and then they changed the colour to this blue colour, uh, which I actually prefer. Very nice metallic blue. If you look, there are little tiny studs. No studs under the wheel wells. Same casting though. Still got the uh, thing on there. Obviously this is before the Beastie Boys came along. Lovely, lovely piece. Then we have the introduction of the Superfast Fast in 1970. So it keeps its number fifth, number 46, but gets these lovely super fast wheels. Still has all the opening features. Um, they did eventually uh, shut the doors but they kept the opening boot feature. So in 1971, the doors get welded closed. I don't have a 71 model, but um, I've seen a few around, so they're not they're not particularly rare. Although this model did finally shut down 
with all its opening features or some partial opening features in 1972. There we go. It was introduced again in the 80s as a military vehicle uh, with no opening features. Well, I think everybody knows what's coming next. I think we're going to have to get this thing out of its little shiny package. And uh, yeah, we're going to compare it with some of those uh, lovely old matchboxes. Wow, she's so shiny. Shiny, shiny. Can't wait to get it out. Well, I've managed to release the beast, as they say. Let's get all this stuff out and have a look around what you get for your million pounds that you have to pay for these things in the UK. Great box art, of course. Gonna try and keep the, uh, the box relatively intact. I'm not really a cardboard collector, but uh, sometimes when you're paying a premium, it's worth uh, hanging on to stuff. Possibly, we'll see. I probably won't keep it, but uh, it's a nice card nonetheless. I might just keep the card and uh, lose that bit of plastic. Well, there you go, there's the box. Brilliant stuff, it's got the old logo on there. 50th anniversary of Superfast. Wow, makes me feel old. I can go back there. And here's the piece, brilliantly contained within its packaging, which is great. Reminiscent a bit of uh, Majorette there actually, with um, exposing the opening feature, which is a nice solid construction actually, very good. Shut lines are nice too. Not overly mad on that steering wheel. Doesn't look too bad when the doors are closed though. Great uh, oh, matchbox tampering is always very good. So uh, that's excellent to see around the back there. Lovely that double bumper. Of course it's got the gray wheels there. That's a homage I would say to the earlier uh, piece from 1963. Great, look at that. Tamp no, lovely tampered headlamps. Silver, yay, silver chrome. They must save the special silver chrome. You don't see that much now on the Matchbox models. Everything's coming out with grey. So there we go, that's beautiful. Overall, a nice feeling piece. It's not particularly heavy or anything. It's not as heavy as those super fast I was playing with just now. But uh, from this side, it doesn't look too bad. A very nicely detailed dashboard. All the features one would hope to expect to see. Uh, just a strange looking steering wheel. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. It kind of reminds me of a fruit machine. Lucky driving. So I'm going to compare it to the super fast version of the 300. Oh yeah, Matchbox has done a great job on this new model. Interesting, it hasn't got any shut lines on the, um, on the bonnet. It's an interesting omission. But the doors are very similar to this, uh, this 300 and the size is around about the same as well, which is kind of about right because the, uh, the 200 or 220 only had a smaller engine and 300 is like a upgunned version. It's essentially the same car. Interesting with the pillars there. Here's, this is an interesting comparison. So here's the original. Uh, 220 against the new 220. It's got the same big fat grill at the front there. Lovely feature that. Move around the vehicle. Interesting uh, they don't have the shut lines there on the old one either. Interesting. Very very sleek looking up front there. Basically the same uh, shut lines at the back for the boot. Sizes of the cars, I thought the uh, the old one was going to be a lot smaller, but uh, when this piece came out in the lineup uh, back in 63, it was the longest car that uh, Matchbox had made, and they had to uh, readjust their box sizes to accommodate it. So uh, there you go. Lovely feature of that, the open side window, no, no B pillar, which is perfectly correct. Fantastic, look at that silver and the grey wheels. Positively perfect. If anyone's seen a 220 in real life, you will fall in love with it. They are just the most beautiful cars ever. I did have the lucky chance of seeing a real one last year, actually, when I went to a little show with Mark.
Oh, and if anyone's wondering whether you can get this back in the box or not, let's have a look and see. I'm going to use the plastic containering. Ugh. Kind of goes in. Oh dear. Hang on. Is that because of this? Let's have a look. No. Oh dear. Yeah, we do have a bit of an issue here with the uh, the plastic holder. Oh well. Maybe next time. got a delivery I can't believe it it's uh, amazing this is a box that's been sent to me all the way from uh, Texas from my good old friend hazard 777 so I think we're gonna have to have a look inside and see what goodies are in here it's it's not massively heavy but it feels like it's full of good quality so uh, let's have a look so I've already cut the uh, box open oh my word you will not believe what I'm seeing here Right, so first up is this, a lovely Auto World. Wow, 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 wow. This is the Pontiac Firebird. That's amazing. I don't think they, um, I don't think Auto World do these, uh, this range anymore. They've kind of concentrated more on the, the good stuff, the expensive stuff. So these ones come with uh, co-mold wheels as well but they've still retained the die cast body. Uh, I think it's a plastic base on there. Just a slightly more economy range. And that is just beautiful. Look at that in yellow. What a thing. Wow, thanks very much again. Whoa, look at that. It's a yellow 2014 Dodge Viper SRT. Crazy, crazy stuff. I think I've got this in red. So this is the alternate colour. Oh my word! I think I'm I'm going to, have to unbox all of my uh, Auto World <laughs> Vipers. Wow! Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Generic wheels or whatever they are. They're just fantastic though. They still look really, really good. Oh my word! I've just seen something. I'm reaching in here. Oh look! Here we go. Look at this. It's another very, very red Dodge Viper. Now, surely this is not the ultra red. That is just amazing, look at that. That looks like an ultra red. Didn't they uh, have white stripes at that this time? Who knows? Wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much, man. I love Vipers. It's a car you don't see at all, uh, uh, very much at all in, in the States or anything. I, I guess they've stopped making these uh, these vipers now oh well, here we go it's the gold chase hot wheels 50 camaro 67 camaro whoa of course has this brilliant at sending me stuff from the states there we go it's the 67 camaro in gold beautiful it's like a metal base wow i just don't know it's probably got a plastic base without the uh, opening Hood. who knows right that's, that's what we got what we got what we got oh there's a few cars in there i'm gonna save them to oh ho check this out what is the chevy chevelle special track day car culture in white crazy crazy stuff look at that wow yeah, this is one of the uh, few Hot Wheel cars that I uh, attempt to collect every single version of. So uh, that is lovely. Very lovely indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, Josh has uh, got his channel kind of back up and running again. But he's also had a lovely little uh, addition to his family. And I want to say congratulations to you and your uh, lovely wife, sir. Very, very uh, blessed indeed.
I have a daughter myself, so uh, I know how lucky you are. Wow. That's nice. Yeah, we, just, we don't get Z-Mac at all in England. In fact, we don't get... The only car we get in England is this one here. Hello. But everything else so far has just been pure Americana. And we don't get these Z-Macs. They did uh, send over some Z-Macs. But they were um, sp special 50-year anniversary. And, of course, the... The going rate on those was uh, ridiculous, but that is nice. Look at that. Wow. Of course, I love Corvettes. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And, oh my word, we've got more. There's more. There is more. There's so many. Right. Oh, look at this. The 80s Corvette with the opening bonnet. What? Seriously, this is, um, wow. This is amazing. This is the, one of the cars I've been uh, just thinking I'm never, ever going to see it. And of course, this is the old Corgi casting. It doesn't say on the base, of course, because it's Hot Wheels when they took over Corgi. But uh, I do have a few examples. Well, I have one example of the Corgi version of this car. So it's great to see this. What year did this come out? Look, those kids having great fun there. 1996, 1997. So there you go. Straight after the takeover. I think the takeover was 96. Wow, that is awesome. Very, very cool. Very classically hot wheeled up as well. It's even got the black roof as well. Very nice. Wow. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. It's Corvettesville, Tennessee. Look at this. Oh, man. The Volkswagen Brasilia. In lovely Merry Christmas mode. Is that this year's Merry Christmas mode? Who knows? Let's have a look. 2015, that's a few years back. Look at that. Wow. Of course, the Brasilia is not a very common... A recasted casting from Hot Wheels, so you do see it from time to time. But this is nice, very, very nicely done. The 15 on the side, I wonder what the uh, significance of that is. There you go, brilliant. Maybe it's the year, that year of Christmas. Right, there's a couple of very special cars coming in right now. First up is this piece here the 59 delivery. Now, I believe these are special collector's edition cars for K the Kmart. K yes, is it? Maybe. Kmart Collector's Day cars. That is gorgeous. It's a casting that I do not have as well, which is the, uh, the brilliance of this piece. Absolutely gorgeous. Imagine uh, turning your Cadillac into a delivery. But there you go. That's what they did. Is it a Cadillac? No, it's not really, is it? It's a 59 Chevy Impala or something similar. Bel Air or something that's been uh, vanned out. Fantastic. Look there, number six for the Kmart situation. And if that lot wasn't enough, um, Josh, me old mate, you've absolutely blown me away with this piece. So uh, without further ado, here it comes. Batman! What is that? That's a six, a number six piece. It is the highly sought after Kmart Batmobile edition. Look at this thing. Let's get it out of this plastic. Too much plastic here. Wow. You can see why it's in the plastic. This has just got to be the most amazing Batmobile ever. Look at that. What is going on? Of course, it's got a metal base, rubber tyres, as have all the Kmart cars. Look at the detail up the rear there. Little blue parachute, fire exploders. You know, I haven't seen a review on this car at all anywhere. Uh, they're probably out there somewhere. So if this is the first time you've seen this car, 
like me, for instance, then uh, you should be quite blown away by this. Wow. Whew. Anyway, if one. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for watching uh, all the waffle that uh, Mark and I have pumped out today. I hope you've enjoyed having a look through uh, all these lovely cars that uh, Hazard 777 has sent me. I mean, look at that. When are you going to see that again? And of course, the Vipers and this amazing Pontiac Firebird. Wow, 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 wow. Hello, what about me? But yeah. I'm just having an epiphany. I'm going to have to open something up here. Let's open up this one here and this one here. Indeed. Come on. These are awesome. Whoa, there we go. Wow. Beautiful. Look at that. Wow. It's just stunning in red. No wonder they used it as the uh, the marker car for the cover. Wow. Let's have a look at the base. Of course, it's in 164. True 164. What a thing. And of course, we're going to get the yellow one out as well. There we go. On the back there, it doesn't really tell you an awful lot. It just tells you all the other cars in the series. The Cougar. I've got a Cougar. Now I've got the Firebird. I've got the, I just need the SVO, really. I met El Camino, very hard to get hold of for some reason. But these Vipers, wow. Look at that. Wow. So which is your favorite, yellow or red? Wow, the yellow really makes the color stick out there, doesn't it? Uh, makes all the details come alive. But the red is just so vibrant. This is amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope to see you again in the next video. Wow. I just can't get over this. This is crazy. Ta-ta for now. I think I'm going a bit mad. I just found this. Hold on, let's check it out. Oh, it's a mystery model from somewhere. It's a mystery model of a Batmobile. It's golden. It's the golden Batmobile. What is that? It's the Arkham Asylum one, I think, isn't it? Wow, that is brilliant, brilliant stuff. Cool as. Thank you very much, Hazard. Wow, that's a bit special, actually, because, uh, I mean, I do collect Batmobile stuff. Wow, you've really... Just send me stuff that I love. This is awesome.